What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another day in Car Mechanic Simulator 2021 with me, the Virtual Mechanic. And today's project, this is a cool mod by Jackal. Welcome to the Cars Modding Jackal. This looks fantastic. This is the Mayor Manx electric beach buggy and it is absolutely incredible it's available in all of the places so you can buy it anywhere we got ours from the auction house and the bad auction house at that it's quite low mileage for a little buggy it's a 2023 buggy but still quite low mileage under 13,000 kilometers on there and today we're going to be taking this beast on to the gravel track with an attempt to beat the audi quattro with a 143 698 standing and a 141.676 in the flying lap. That's the important one, the flying lap. Can we beat that one today in a little electric beach buggy? Yes, it's electric. It's the only config available for this one is the 2.0 electric edition. So we're just going to have to play around with that and have some fun. We will be keeping it as the electric motor. But first off, did we get a good deal? No, no, we didn't. 76,124 is what I paid. And I could sell it for 75,423, losing out on 701 before we begin but hopefully we can claw that one back when we come to the sale of this vehicle a little bit later on as i said it's electric the engine in it is the eden 1h currently pumping out 161 horsepower now we will be squeezing every single ounce of power we can from this engine making it as fast as we possibly can to try and get it around that gravel track as fast as we possibly can will it be any good there is only one way to find out. Now, don't forget, I do have a special join now section to join our members club, the VM Garage Club, with a little bit of links onto Discord where you can get all of my configs and liveries that we have built. We have a new member, so very, very thank you very much. And very much I do appreciate this. A big Pappy 757. Glad to see you here. And I hope you're enjoying the configs and liveries that we have available through the Discord server. But enough about that. Let's get in to this beautiful Mayor Manx. Let's get it into the car wash. Let's get it cleaned up. In the car wash with this fun little beach buggy. Let's get it cleaned. Oh, jumpy game. And see what colour it is underneath that dirt, dust and grime. What colour are you going to be? Well, you're going to be a lovely green. You're going to be like a metallic green, aren't you? That looks awesome. I don't think we're going to keep that, though. I think we need to go with something just a little bit more over the top. Let's get the interior done. Get this piece back on the lifter and start figuring out what we've got going on underneath. The Manx Beach Buggy is in the air. Now, we know it's electric, so we know we don't have any oil to drain. But let's get underneath and see if we're going to have to take a few bits out. It's going to let me take the gearbox out without taking the wheels and drive shafts off. But I still think we should do that anyway. So let's get these out of here and see what happens. Off with that front wheel. And while we're here, we'll check out what we've got going on with the suspension. It looks like it's all there. Although we do have a little bit not lining up with the inner tie rod and the steering rack. Bit of a shame on that one. But let's get the other drive axle out. You come. No wheel on this side. And then let's take the gearbox out of here. Lots and lots of bolts on this one. But nothing rusty so far. So I'm very happy with that. Can't believe how many bolts there are on this one. Let's just keep going and get the last of them out. And we should be able to pull that engine out of there. Hopefully, fingers crossed. It is front wheel drive, which should definitely make it a bit of fun on the gravel track a little bit later on. But can we pull that engine out of there? We can't open that clamshell, so let's just give it a go. No. First, need to move the final drive gear. So let's get it back up in the air and see what we need to take out of here. What do we need to take out? Final drive gear. Am I going to have to take all of this out? I can't take the rest of that out from here. So let's just hope that that one piece was it. Back down you go. And we'll give this another shot. Out you come. <laughs> no, first remove the gearbox input shaft. I'm going to go in from this side because I'm going to assume it's one of these. Yes, so we need to take out the reduction gear and the gear gearbox input shaft. Words. Now let's try that for a third time. Third time's the charm. That's the one we like. I've, it's been a while since I've worked on an electric engine, so I'm not sure. I am just going to take this front clamshell off, though, and the lights so we can get in underneath. And see what we got going on. So we do have an ECU in this one. We also have a fuse box up here. And the battery that does stick out just a little bit. But we will uh, gloss over that one. We've also got the ABS pump and module. And then we've got the brake servo power steering reservoir. And the wishy-washy reservoir that we do need to drain liquids from. Down the back, just the one big old EV battery model module. And then obviously our rear suspension setup. We are missing an arm at the top here. 
and a few little bits like that but we'll sort that one out a little bit later on let's just get these oil uh, these liquids drained and get ready to start stripping the rest of this out right click additional tools drain tool click and hold on the container and you'll drain all the liquids out i'm going to get the rest of this all stripped down get the bits that i need to get so we can get it all back together and then we'll come back and sort out this beautiful bodywork that's the electric motor and all the suspension repaired, replaced or upgraded, ready to go back on this beautiful little beast. But before we jump into all this bodywork, I need to say a huge congratulations to Mopar Man winning the Salem Spectra Fastback Discord competition. Absolutely fantastic, beautiful looking car. He did a custom Whipple charger for it. The dashboard itself had lots of custom accents. It was slammed down, had a beautifully beautifully done engine bay very similar to what i did with mine in the engine bay curving the sides down just making it look a little smarter but he did a fantastic job of that as well it looks absolutely beautiful so well done and you may be thinking well where's everything else gone well we had our previous competition winners up here and now we've got the most recent competition winners up here so we've got two full previous winner boards going obviously underneath our previous speeder boards which i quite like up there and then there's more room on here to play around with new competition winners. So well done, Mopar Man. Absolutely fantastic. By the time you see this on Monday, a new competition will be in full swing. We'll know what car we're building. It's modern-ish American cars. So head over to Discord. Check it out. See which one we've got up there and what one we should start building next. But now, let's get back into our Mayor Manx beach buggy. Let's start stripping all of this down. Let's just get that clamshell back off again with the headlights. Car part four is also a piece. Out you come. Car part one is a piece. Front bumper, we need you off of there. That's part of the rear clamshell, which we can't take off yet. So we'll come back to that one in a minute. Let's grab this mirror, the windshield car part two, which I also can't take off yet because we need to take the window out. There we go. Now I should be able to get car part two. Rear clamshell still won't come out because we need to take the tail lights out first. We'll get that license plate off of there as well. And now we still can't take the clamshell off. And I don't know what's missing. It's highlighting something red over underneath. Something red over there, but it keeps changing as to where it is. So I don't know why we can't take this clam. Oh, maybe it's because car part three is still in. Let's try that one. Now can we take clamshell off? No. Seats, they shouldn't be causing it. Oh, car part five. That might have been where the red line was. Clamshell. I still can't take the clamshell off. That was have a red line, though. Uh, oh. Didn't mean to jump into there. What have we got? Rear clamshell body. I can't figure out why I can't take this clamshell off. Let's see. Is Let's go into the body shop and see what we should be looking for in this Mayor Manx. We got them. We got them. We got them. That was the front bit. That was the back bit. Car part six. Where do you suppose? Oh, are you the lettering? You are the lettering. There we go. Now we can take off that rear clamshell. That's what we needed. Now, the rest of this should all be part of the main body. But we'll get in and get these interior out first. I quite like these seats as well. I think they're going to go really nice with it. So, for the time being, we'll put them back in. If I want to change them later, I will certainly change them later. But let's see if we have got everything for this beast. I'm a bit concerned. 1% on there. And nothing showing up on there. We definitely did get everything. Before we jump into that, we bought the car for 76000 the frame is at 11%. So what do we reckon for this one today? I'm going to go with the classic 1500. 2500. I was just a little bit off of there, which is a bit of a shame. Let's get this welder put away. Away you go. We'll jump back into the body shop very quickly. And we can see that this is the only set of options available. So what I'm going to do is let's go and repair the bits we've got. If we can repair them over to our repair table. And let's get as much of this repaired as we can. And then buy all the extra bits we need to buy. So I'm just going to go through and get all of this done. That's everything repaired. Let's start getting it back on and see what we are missing. Let's just start with this rear clamshell because that was the hardest piece. We did manage to repair that. Repair? Repair that. So on you go. Car part five. We got that one as well. Was there anything else on the inside? Oh, yeah, this roll cage piece. Let's get you in. That was three. Car part two is on the roof there. Car part four was something. That's car part six. Did we get the tail light done? We did, and I don't think we had this tail light, but we're going to put it on anyway. No, we didn't. So we get that one sorted. Rear bumper. I don't even think we had the rear bumper to start with, so we'll get you. Obviously, we're going to have to buy a new window. I don't think we had this mirror. No, we did not, so we'll need you as well and you. Did we repair this mirror from this side? We did indeed. 
Car part four on you go. Front clamshell. No, we didn't repair you, so we're going to need a new one of you. And front bumper. We managed to repair the front bumper. Car part one. The headlights as well. So now let's go into the shop and buy what we needed. Left tail light. Rear bumper. Window. Obviously, we knew we needed a window. Side mirror on the right. Windshield. And then that front clamshell. And let's get all of that on and see if we have got all of this back together. Did we manage to repair the headlights? I think we did. I think we did. Yes, we did. Windshield in you go. Round to the back. We also need that rear tail light in there. And a rear bumper on there. And we'll get that rear window in. And we'll put on one of my blank VM license plates. Just so we can know if we've got everything for the bodywork. Loving the surround with a license plate holder there. That's looking quite cool. But is that everything for the bodywork for this wonderful little beast? 100%. I think we got it all. That was quite an easy one. Like doing that. Let's just go for the interior. As I said for the minute, we're just going to pop in the interior that came with it. Although we might change that steering wheel. All I'm thinking is we'll change the steering wheel. So let's go in. We want seat seven. And I kind of want to see what color options we've got with seat seven. Not that many. I mean, we've got lots of colours, but this one here looks like... Oh, should we go for some white accents on this? So maybe that seat is fabric. Let's give it a go. We'll go for that one and see how that paints a little bit later on. As for the steering wheel, we're going to go with a classic VM steering wheel. Uh, where are you? Do we want to go for... Uh, let's go for the centre one again. Because we've used that one quite a lot, but I know it paints relatively well. So let's just get this all in and check that we've got all of this up to 100% before putting it into the paint shop. And it's all looking good on there. Is that everything? 100%, 100%, 100% it is. Let's get this one into the paint shop and pick a colour. This is the colour we're going for our beautiful beach buggy. It is a matte chameleon thanks to the quality of life mod with the base colour. That's the base colour purple or pinky purple as we've got going on there. And if we go into our water droplet for the quality of life mod, Custom Chameleon Matte is what I've selected that one to. Secondary colour is 40, which is a lovely green, giving paying homage to the original green that, that came on it. The power is 35 and the amount is 60 on there. we also gone for our paint all screws, but not rims. And we've just gone for a white colour on there. Hopefully that's going to look fantastic and play into our seats a little bit. So let's get all of that painted on there. There's a couple of bits I kind of want to change. So we're going to take this front bumper off, which we're just going to have to take these lights off quickly first. Out you come. This rear bumper off. Out you come. And then we're going to get in and change the colour on these seats as well. So I'm going to quickly give that a shot. and Maybe see if we can do a little bit more with that steering wheel. Although I could, quite liked it just with the purple VM logo on the inside. So I'm going to give some of that a try painting it. Get it back in. I'll see you in a second. So there we go then. Just a couple of little changes. Made that front bumper bull bar in a matte white on there around to the back did the same with the rear one just a few splashes of white on there and it kind of mixes in with the seats where we added a bit of purple to the center of the seats very similar to the bodywork you can never get it perfect and a little bit of that purple also on the steering wheel on there i think it looks quite good if we just go into normal mode jump in and take a seat the blue dials are a little bit bright but uh, it is what it is it's looking fantastic in here I am loving that. I think it looks great so far. So now let's get this beast back on the lifter. Start getting everything else painted and then get it all back together. Everything's painted and ready to go back on. Obviously, all of that suspension is already on. And I'm already liking it with all the white popping through the side. I think it looks pretty good in my opinion. Can't really see the engine bay because this clamshell doesn't open. But we will get in and take a look at what we've done. we got a battery tray bracket. I used the Volkswagen bracket on the top for this one today but painted white so you can't see the logo or anything like that white fuse box obviously our tuned stage three type a ecu a little bit of black on the module and the pump itself in a white on there and then all of our lovely containers just not painted in this one they just are what they are we've also got our performance ev battery module in there generating us a little bit of extra power underneath we've got the main cross member in a purple at the back here with all of the arms in a lovely matte white and then all of the bushings are in black with a purple center and the white bolts really do come through looking awesome on there pink knuckle white knuckle cover and then pink it's purple purple brake calipers on there as well and then a black purple black spring set up looking very very nice at the front it is the same 
except we don't have a front cross member. We do have the performance front sway bar, thanks to the TK Aftermarket mod. Absolutely beautiful on there, along with the brakes from that as well. Black, purple, black on the shock at the front, and then the arms again, just in a lovely white with purple connections. Looking fantastic, in my opinion. Obviously, we still got drive axles and the motor to go in yet, so let's get on and go and build that electric motor. Fully tuned up and ready to go. There isn't much to these electric motors, so let's just get on with it. The center housing is in that lovely purple. Then we've got the Stator, which is in a black, and the Rotor, which is in a purple on there, with the end gear housing, end gear, end rear housing, words, in a black and purple on there, looking pretty nice with lots of bolts. Let's just get you all the way around and buttoned up, and then we can get this beast into the car. Front end housing in a purple on there, looking very nice. All of these bolts will go white when we drop it in the car, so we'll definitely be taking a look at that a little bit later. The AC compressor is in purple and black, and I think that looks absolutely fantastic. That is such a good-looking piece when you get the multicolour on there looking good. Uh, then we've got a cheeky little bracket just up here in the purple. On you go. And then we have a secondary bracket on the top. The bracket support, which is in the black and purple. Again, looking very nice with the colour mixing. Uh, the charger in you go in the black and purple. Again, some of these accents that they come out with look absolutely fantastic with the purple bolts on top and purple connections, but everything else in a black. The power electronics unit is exactly the same, looking very nice on the top there. This one does have a little cover to go on the top of it, which we have done in the purple just to finish that one off. And now all of our cables, these are just all in a matte white, and I think they look absolutely fantastic in my opinion. Someone outside beeping their horn very loud. Don't know if you could hear that, but there we go. That is the beautiful electric motor all done, ready to go in this car. Just a few more bits to go in so we can get this one finished off. So let's get it off the stand and let's get it dropped into our lovely little beach buggy. There's the stand at the car. Let's get it in and see how this engine looks. Look, not many parts in there at all. Lovely, easy build, these electric motors. So let's get you put away and let's just jump in from the side here and take a look at that beautiful little motor in there. That is looking absolutely fantastic. The white bolts really finishing it off. Very low in there and obviously slightly off to one side. In fact, while we're here... Can we get, I shouldn't put them in yet. I do put this in there, the gear inbox, gear box input shaft, words. Uh, then the reduction gear in there, and then we have to get it up in the air to get these last few bits in. So let's get it up in the air and get this beautiful little Mayor Manx all finished off and ready to go around the gravel track today. See if we can beat that beautiful Audi Quattro. wonder if we'll be able to beat its time. I'm doubting it, but there's only one way to find out. On with the gearbox then, as I said, in the purple, looking fantastic. And these white bolts around here, there is a lot of them, but it looks absolutely beautiful. Very, very pleased about this one turned out. Let's get it all buttoned up. In you go, in you go. And then we'll get some wheels done for this beautiful little buggy. On with the front drive axle, just in a black with a white bolt on there. If we go over to this side, it's exactly the same, just a little bit shorter. But there we go. That's all done. Ready for the wheels. We've got some liquids to top up. We're not going to tint the windows today. We've only got the windshield and the rear window to do. So we're just going to leave them as they are. Lovely to be able to see through this. See that lovely interior all in there. Again, looking absolutely fantastic. Let's get on, though, and let's pick some wheels. I've gone for the rim at 260 for this one. I think they're looking pretty good, but we're going to do something with this color, obviously. Let's pick our white that we've been using throughout the build there. And I'm going to go all the way across the steel black because, well, it's a good combination. It's one I use quite a lot. But anyway, onto it. We want to get a bit of both. I want the inner rim white and the outer rim black. So mixed four. Paint and mix, is that better? Nope, that's just plain black. But there we go. Mixed four is definitely what we're after on that one. The bolts go black. The outer rim goes black. And then that centerpiece in a lovely white on there. Let's get you painted and let's get these rims all together and onto the car. Just balancing the last rim now and then we can get these onto the car. See what sizes we've gone for for this one today and get this beautiful Mayor Manx all finished off and outside in the sun. Rim 260, as I said, the rears and the fronts is all the same size all the way around. We've gone for a 16 inch rim with a 225 width and a 55 profile on there. On you go, all bolted up. Looking fantastic. I actually really like these rims. I think they look absolutely incredible. Again, 16-inch rim at 225 width, 55 profile. Nice and simple. No ET needed or anything like that. And these rims look absolutely fantastic. Let's just get around to the other side where it's a bit more sunny. I'm really liking that. Also, the green pops so much more inside the workshop here. Workshop, garage, whatever you want to call it. I'm really liking that. 
chameleon, matte chameleon finish on there. Looking beautiful. But there we go. All finished off. We just need to get some liquids topped up and get this beautiful beach buggy outside in the sun. Well, there she is, all finished. There, Mayor Manx or Beach Buggy, as I've been referring to this one as. Excellent mod by Jackal. Really have loved this one. It has been a lot of fun. One last thing we've got to do is get this license plate swapped out to the official license plate. We're going for this build today, which is Beach Bug, because it reminds me of a Beach Buggy, and I couldn't quite fit Buggy on there. So Beach Bug it is, and also it's quite a cool name for it. I am loving this. I think this vehicle is so incredibly cool. I would actually have one of these in real life. I think it's absolutely awesome. And especially in this matte chameleon paint, it is absolutely stunning. I love the color change. Thank you to the Quality of Life mod for allowing that to happen. Absolutely fantastic. And while we're here, I need to say a massive shout out to Caleb Davis or Davies. Thank you very much. The newest member of the VM Garage Club. Thank you for joining. Glad to see you over in Discord. Hope you're enjoying them configs and liveries in your game. There we go. But anyway, enough about that. At this point, I would normally jump inside this vehicle and see what it sounds like, but it's electric, so we only get a startup noise. So let's enjoy that. That's it. That's all you get. I'm pressing the accelerator and nothing is happening. But anyway, let's get this beautiful little beach buggy onto the dyno. See what its horsepower is what its drag rating is, and then get it onto the gravel track for a couple of laps. On the dyno with the Mayer Manx 2.0 electric with an Eden 1H engine pumping out 161 electrical horses. How much have we tuned it by today, and what will its drag rating be? Oh, I'm quite impressed with that gain. 158 horsepower gained at 98%, almost a whole new engine on top of there bringing us up to 318 total horsepower and a very lowly drag rating of C293. I'm very glad we're not drag racing this one today and we're going to take it round the gravel track for that. Here's what I've done with the electric gearbox. Very little. I've moved this from one to two just to give it a tiny little bit more acceleration. Slightly lower on the top speed, which is a bit of a shame, but we could adjust this if we wanted to. Have some fun with it. Find your own gear tune for this beautiful electric beach buggy. Don't forget, it does have ECU fully tuned up to 16%. And you can watch the short on how to easily do that every time up here. Well, there's a link in the description below. Also a link to how to tune the carburetors perfectly every time. But enough about that. Let's get this beautiful little beach buggy onto the gravel track and see what she can do. It's been a while since we've been back to the gravel track, and I will say this one is incredibly hard to see out of with the steering wheel place where it is. We could do it being sat just a tiny little bit higher up just to make the visibility a bit better, or maybe a smaller steering wheel might have done it. I'm not sure. This isn't going to be the fastest vehicle you've ever seen around this gravel track, but we're going to do a standing lap, then a flying lap. You won't see much of the standing, but you will see all of the flying lap regardless of what happens. It could be an absolute nightmare, but there is only one way to find out. Let's go. Come on, you beautiful little beast. Let's get this off the line and see where you're going to go on our gravel track lap time board. As I said, not the fastest acceleration in the world as we come up towards the first turn. Not too bad. A little bit off the acceleration there just to whip us around this first corner and up and over the crest at the top there when we eventually get to it. There we go. Nice and easy. Back down the other side and now a full round to the other side. Oh, my God. I thought I was going to hit the tree then, but we just about recovered it, I think, without being able to see properly. I don't even know where the turnings are. There it is. We made it. I just sort of guessed, and I happened to guess right. This next one is going to be really hard because it catches you out even when you can see. So let's go there. That's the one. That I think I made that a lot easier, look a lot easier than it actually was. Round the nippy bit, and then around the final corner. Nice and easy. Where's the track? Where's the track? Going around this way and across the line for a 1 of 55. I'm actually a little bit impressed by that. I've only been getting two minutes in all of my practice runs. Oh, gone a little bit wide there on the flying lap. And this is the one that counts. So that's not a good start. But up and over the hill, taking us just a little while for that electric motor to pull us up here. As we nip down to the other side, coming around this corner. Don't want to hit that tree. There we go. Just about making it through there into the wavy section before the jump. Are we going to get a little bit of air? Yes, we did get a little bit of air. I only could tell because there was no road noise. This is so hard to see out of. Where is the track? There it is. Coming around to the right here. I'm going to use a little bit of braking or oh, just on the edge of this corner just to help whip us around a little bit. And then we've got to go all the way back around to the left. Just coming off the acceleration just a little bit there. 
helping us pull us around weirdly but there we go every time you let off the acceleration if you're turning it does sort of like yank you a little bit so you can always make that extra turn if you need to just by letting off the accelerator now up and over the crest and then we've got to go all the way around to the left into the narrow section and this is one of my favorite bits in this track because you do generate quite a bit of speed you don't want to hit either of them side bits because you can roll very easily and you want to make sure you make that turn into the forest section where, again, we may struggle to see. Am I going to crash into something? Am I going to ruin our flying lap? I certainly hope not. Oh, nearly missed that corner there. Just about managed to recover it, though. Coming down through, this one's going to be hard because you can't see the marker most of the time anyway. I'm just going to let off the acceleration. Is that it? That's it. There we go. As we nip it into there, we want to just thread the needle through there. Come around the final corner. Oh, almost cut that a bit too early and get this beast across the line in a 149.524 and I am actually very very impressed by that one I wasn't even expecting to break the 150s let alone get less than two minutes so very happy with the 149.524 let's go see where it's going to sit on our speederboard it won't be in that top five I'm pretty confident but I'll let you know where it sits nonetheless let's get it back to the garage get it cleaned up and see if we can sell it on for a tasty bit of profit well, we didn't make it into the top five, which is a bit of a shame, but I didn't actually expect it to. But we did manage to get an eighth out of 13 different cars around the gravel track, which I'm quite impressed with. And the 149.524, not that far off if we're being truly honest with ourselves. It definitely could have been a lot better. It was electric. It was never going to be the fastest thing around there. But I did enjoy it nonetheless. What did you think? Do let me know in the comments below. But there we go. Not quite onto the actual board itself. But 8 out of 13, again, quite impressed with absolutely beautiful i've loved doing this beach buggy and yes it wasn't the best around the gravel track but it was a lot of fun nonetheless and i definitely enjoyed the build link in the description below if you want to grab this one for the steam workshop well done jackal it is an absolute crazy beast and i love it just wish it had a little bit more power and the seating position was a little bit better but let's talk some facts and figures we bought the car for seventy six thousand one hundred and twenty four, and could have sold it and lost out on 701 if we did so there and then at the beginning but we didn't do that we spent a further 51,049 on parts paying our total spend 127,173 can we make some money from this beautiful beach buggy let's take a look well, there she is, all 100% finished. And obviously, we changed it from that green to a purple, but kept some of the green in there, looking fantastic. We did squeeze more power from that factory Eden 1H engine with 161 horsepower. We bumped it up to 318, which was a gain of 98%. Very, very impressed with that one. Almost a whole new engine on the top. But we did spend 127173 to get there. Can we make some money? Yes, yes, we can with a sale of 238,851. Leaves us with 111,678 profit from the Mayor Manx 2.0 electric. Excellent work. Love that one. Lot of fun. Shame it wasn't a little bit better around the gravel track, though. But anyway, some of you guys didn't leave me a score on the Salem Spectre Fastback, so it will be going on the board in the next episode regardless. But I'm giving you a couple more days to give some scores for this one out of 10. If you want to, leave it in the comments for that video. It's a previous one for this one, but go and watch it if you haven't seen it already. And if you have, just let me know in the comments what you rate it out of 10. But what have we got coming up next? Well, this is another mod from Jackal, who's uh, been doing... The dashboard is missing. Who's been doing quite a few mods recently, and I'm loving it. This is the BMW E21. There's a standard edition and a race edition, I believe, for this one. We went for the standard edition. It's available in the barn, the junkyard, or the auction house. You can't buy it brand new. It is from 1982. That kind of makes sense. Uh, the one we got is in quite bad condition, but not that bad. We can definitely sort it out. Did we get a good deal for it? No. Not even close. 19650 is what we paid for this one. And we could sell it currently for 16604 losing out on 3046 It might be quite hard to claw that one back for this old BMW. But what engine is it? Because we will be drag racing it. The engine is the i4 M31 turbo engine. Currently pumping out 125 horsepower. That's a little low. Um, hopefully we can tune that one up and still make a good run on the drag strip from this beautiful little BMW. The E21 is going to be fun. This is what we are going to be working on in the next episode.
That's it for today's video. I do hope you did enjoy it. If you did, leave me a cheeky little like. Don't forget to mention in the comments what you thought of that beautiful beach buggy and any colour suggestions for the beautiful BMW we've got coming up next. Always happy to hear them. Thank you again to the channel members. You are all absolutely wonderful. You can hit the join button below and come and get access to my private Discord channel where I post my configs and liveries for you to enjoy in your game if you want them to go there. That is obviously only if you can get access to your files. It doesn't work on consoles, I'm afraid. It's only PC only that we can do that for. But you can still join and support the channel at $2.99 a month. If you can afford that, absolutely fantastic. If you can't, just continue watching as you are doing. Thank you so much for watching this video. As always, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Like and subscribe for Virtual Mechanics.